Hi guys and welcome back to Crafty Quotes and Designs. I hope you're well and having a really great day. So guys, today is another beautiful quilt and this one, it's big blocks. <laughs> so it's going to be really easy peasy and beginner friendly. But before I go into the video, I just wanted to give you a little update on what I asked you last video. So for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are always coming back and supporting me, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything that you absolutely do, especially those of you, and a lot of you actually got back to me on my dilemma. So I took your advice, as I said, to God's truth that I would, and a majority of you actually said I should reach out and ask him. So the funny thing was, he actually phoned me that same night that the video went, went up, which was I think the Saturday evening. And um, he phoned me up, and he, he phoned me up around midnight, London, London time, Australian time. And um, he obviously hadn't seen the video, he was just phoning just because. And he was like, Mum, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, am I waking you up? Yes. He said, Mum, is the best time to call you. I said, son, just call me anytime. I will get up and answer the phone. Anyway, we just started to chat. And um, I said, son, there's something I need to ask you. He said, what is it? I said, um, do you remember the quilt I gave to you? And he was like, uh, what quilt? What, what are you talking about? I said, the quilt I gave to you. He said, Mum, we use the quilts all the time. I said, no, the quilt I gave to you because um, he has a, a daughter with his girlfriend. So I gave um, the girlfriend a quilt also. So she had one and um, the baby, I put a picture up for, of her. She is so my, she is so damn gorgeous. This child, she's the most beautiful baby ever. Well, I know there's lots of beautiful babies, but I'll put a picture up. She is so beautiful. Anyway, he said, we use the quilts all the time. I said, no, I'm referring to your quilt. And he went, Mom, you know what? I absolutely forgot all about that quilt. He said, honest to truth, Mom, I really forget it. I said, I thought you just didn't appreciate. He said, no, nah, Mom, no, I would never do that, Mom. I love you, Mom. I don't want to upset you like that. He said, no, nah, Mom, I will go. He said, as you remind me, I will go and collect it after work. I promise you. And that was it. It was just simple as that. And he said, Mom, it was just when that moving day was just really busy. He said, you know how it is when you're moving, it's just, everything is just all over the place. And I honestly just forget it, forgot about it. And um, he said, I'll go get it. He said, as you remind me now, when I leave work, I will go straight to the house and pick it up. So it was just as simple as, as you guys said, just ask him. <laughs> Rather than stressing and fretting myself, which I did for over like three weeks, which was pointless really, or probably longer than that. To be honest, I think I moaned and complained to myself for longer than that. So thank you guys for really supporting me. A lot of you left me some really encouraging, supportive messages. And a lot of you also expressed you had the same experience. So it's it's not an individual thing that anybody who is a quilter would experience. Young people are young people. What the heck is that? I bet you it's my husband. It is. This man always texts me whenever I'm on the camera. He will wait. So yeah, there you go. So um, I will take you through now to the quilt. I've got it here with me. Let me show it to you. It's really lovely. I did a few things different this time. Another what if moment when I was making it. So what I did was um, I added on the borders to the blocks. It is a quilt as you go. So again, I make my quilts as you go in three rows for any of you who don't know what I'm referring to. And um, I also used the back end fabric as binding so i did not how can i say it, it was self binding that's the words i will use it was self binding so i didn't trim um to make any new binding or any cut any binding i didn't do that i used the excess backing material and i cut it purposely that way so that i only had an inch to wrap around to create that binding okay but let me show you i don't want to throw anything down so this is it as I said, it's big blocks. It is 54 and it's it's really lovely. Hopefully you can see rather than my, my arm. Um, really, really, really gorgeous quilt. And it comes together very quickly. Definitely because of the big blocks and it's only six blocks you make it. And guess what? You're gonna love this even further. It is only 
six fat quarters and yardage you need. That's it. Of course, minus your um, backing fabric or your, yeah, your backing fabric. Minus your backing fabric, right? So your background is your white and you only need six quarters, fat quarters to make this quilt. That is it. And you still end up with a little bit of fat quarters left over. So, um, which you can use for scraps, okay? But, lovely, you can use scraps. You, you can use scraps, you can use fat quarters, and you can use yardage. So there's lots of variations with this quilt. Um, there is a pattern to download, which takes you through all the sizes and the how-tos for the quilt as you go. Um, with that being said, guys, I think I have chatted long enough. So um, have a good one. Once again, thank you to all of you who have really supported me. It was really, really, really bugging me. But, you know, I soon realized after reading all of your messages that it's something that happens to all of us as quilters. So um, I'm down to earth once again. <laughs> so love you lots. Have a good one. Let me know what you think about the quilt. It is definitely big and friendly. And um, it's a relaxing one. I had fun making it. I'll be honest about that, especially the quilting. You're going to see the quilting on it. It's so beautiful. Right, guys? So I'll see you next week. Bye. Happy quilting, guys. All right, guys. So we're going to get into the video for today's tutorial. So I have my cuts already laid out here. And before I get any further, let me tell you what you actually need. You would need one bottle of um, fat quarter, and that's a bundle of six that I've used for this quilt. All right, and also you're going to be needing some yardage and from those you're going to cut all of the cuts that you require and I will tell you everything in the pattern okay so I have my cuts here and I'm going to start and show you how to lay the block out or how to build a block so th these are some rectangle cuts from my fat quarter and these are some squares from my fat quarter and you can use any variety um, within the bundle that is you can even use scraps if you so wish desired it's very much a very flexible quilt that you can use scraps yardage and even um, a layer cake if you have it because the requirements of the sizes are very uniform that you can choose in between you can even use a f um, charm squares all right so it's very versatile now it's very it's simple to put together and what you need to do once you've gotten all of your cuts together there are some more cuts to come but I will show you what needs to be done for the block itself right now so I'm just going to take and just lay out around middle square here and I'm just putting two at each end. Remember you can mix up the um, the rectangles so you don't have to use the same okay and I think that gives it a, a good variety hence the reason why I said you, you could definitely use um, a, 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 a um, I'm just losing my concentration sorry you can just simply use you know, scrap for this okay it's very versatile so I'm just moving up so I have a little bit more space and I'm going to put this together here. Now try not to put the blocks together like, like so, all right? Um, obviously, we don't want to show the joining of the fabrics too close to each other. We want to, to space it out, all right? Okay, and um, so for something like this, what I, what I have been trying not to do is to put them on the same side. Just, you know, just mix it up, really, all right? Now this is a very bright color and um, it plays really nicely with, with the whole block itself, okay? Um, this is all right, but we have similar colors here already, so I'm just gonna swap these around. So you can do this at this stage before you commit to whatever layout you want, okay? So just that you're happy so that the color flows really nicely um, on, on the block. I do feel it's a little bit too much play here in the purple and again I don't want these two fabrics sort of opposite each other so I'm going to swap them around yet again all right I think that works so far it looks fine now the next objective is to use these I just put those extras at the side and use your longer rectangle and that goes 
there. Now, as I said before, the blocks come up really nice and big and they sew together very quickly. This is a quilt that you can get done in a day, all right? It's, it's a very much a quick quilt. That is basically a block almost done. Now, I have my corner squares here and they are simply just going to fit in there. And again, it's at this stage whereby you would just double check that you're happy with the layout before you actually start sewing anything together. All right, so that's that there. Okay, now again, I, I feel that these two fabrics are too close to each other. I can swap it around for another block if I want to. Okay, if you want, you can have opposites, the tracks for the colors um, on the ends. Okay, you can do that. Or um, you can just have one inch of the different colors. Remember, it's very much an organized and um, scrappy block. All right. So I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to, I'll probably swap this one up. I'll swap the green on this side, I reckon. And I'll put this one here. Or I will probably swap. Yeah, I think that's fine. Probably swap that there. Put the green there. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. All right, so it's at this stage is where you need to definitely do that. Now, when I am sewing this together, I have definitely been chain piecing to sew the block together. Hence the reason why I said you can really get this done in one day. Ideally, you're only making six blocks and you can see how big they come up. So to sew this together, what I have been doing is sewing these two front sides together and I will work my way around. So I'll chain piece this one to this one, chain piece this one, and then chain piece that one, okay? So then when I have finished chain piecing them, I know I have started, this is my first one, so second, third, and fourth. So I will then bring the block back and put it back in that area there. Once I have done that, I will then do the same and start sewing on the white. And I'll do the same yet again and work my way around. And then once I've finished, put it back in the same order so that I doesn't get myself confused. Now, um, if you mix it all up, it's fine. The most important thing here is to remember that the white fabric the white long rectangle needs to be on the end. Do not swap it around because then you're going to change the layout of the whole block. Okay, and if you do that for one, you'll have to take it all out. All right, so then once it's done, you then sew it together as a nine patch. So I'm going to sew it now and I'll show you how it actually comes about.
all right so now our three all layers are completed we just need to join it now now okay just wanted to point something out to you where I have actually made a mistake so I've actually swapped it around without even thinking and put the two colors here at the same side all right as I said it's an error you can make but I am not going to worry and take it out I'm just going to leave it as it is okay so if that happens to you, you have a choice. You can take it out, you can leave it. To be honest, it doesn't really make a huge difference. It's just about moving the colors around. That's all. No, no error at all. But what I would say though, is like this fabric here is directional. So just make sure that both the fabrics that you're using in the smaller rectangle and in the square are uh, congruent, i.e. they run in the same way, okay? All right guys, so the quilt um, block is ready, okay? Now it's been pressed really nice and flat. All the seams at the back lays really flat. You can see there's none that's coming on the white so that the prints out is literally going away, okay? So just ensure those little things are done so everything is nice and flat, no issues. Right, so turn it back right side up. Now I'm going to do something a little bit unconventional, okay? I am going to sew my borders onto my blocks. Why? Because it's an aha moment. <laughs> it's a what if moment. What if I do this? <coughs> and I haven't done it, to be honest. This is the first time. I was building the blocks and I thought, what if I just sew on the borders onto the blocks the way I intended to be, rather than making the quilt top, sewing it together, as a quilt as you go in the method that I use and then adding on the borders. What if I do it as I go? So what I intend to do is to make the borders part of the block. And this is what the border. So again, I am going to use the same fat quarters, all right? So this is my corner here. I'm gonna show it to you in the direction that you can see, all right? So just imagine for a minute, this is the whole quilt top layout here and we are going to do this as a quilt as you go. So we're going to do it in rows, okay? So six blocks, three rows. Very quick quilt, the way how I envisage it. So this is my first block here, and then I will obviously have another block here. Okay? Right, so I just want to just give you the idea so that you can see where I'm going with it. I would lay it all out so that you get a clear picture of what the layout is all right so just imagine that from but I'm gonna move this aside because I just want to have enough room to show you what I'm referring to okay I'm going to work with this block here as a cornerstone so to speak it is not a cornerstone but I'm gonna work with it as that so I'm gonna take the same fabric and add it on there okay and now what I am going to do is use a floater border and I'm going to separate the fabrics. So my floater border here is to get um, the eyes to stop of all the colors. So I'm going to add a white border there. Okay. And add another one at the top here. And it goes aside. And go back to my fat quarters now. I'm going to add this one here. And I'm going to add that one there picked up two okay so that is my border I've literally just added the border on to my one of my corner blocks for my quilt remember I have the one here I'm gonna have the other one on the other side okay so, but this is it so this is my border I'm going to sew on so I'm going to sew these two together front sides together then I'm going to sew this one front sides together and then I am going to simply sew, sew this onto that, okay? And then I'm going to sew this onto that, and then 
flip the whole thing over and that's my border done now when it comes to the second area now I'm simply going to do the same the only difference is I won't have this so then my block will more or less be like this let me just take that away and then bring in another block okay so this is what my blocks going to be there is going to be sashing in the middle so I'm just going to add another one just for demonstration example I'm going to put another one there just to separate those blocks and they're going to be something else in the middle but as I said I'm just giving you the vision at the moment okay so that you can relate to where I'm going with this it's not staying it's hanging off the table right so that's it there so this is my first area up here my first block so this is my second block all I'm simply going to do is then sew on like so that is it that is it in a nutshell because I'm going to sew it on like that the sashing oh stay wrong one the sashing is going to literally stay all the way through I don't want the blocks to fall off all the way through all right so that's it so this is going to be my cornerstone up there you can't see it but I'm going to lay it all out hopefully you get the idea I know I haven't given you a proper shot here hopefully you get the idea and you will see so let's go lay it out now and you'll get a clearer picture of what I'm trying to explain to you and I hope this makes sense because I think this is a shortcut why is it that we simply make the blocks sew it together then sew the borders around there are so much more options to get your quilt done much more quickly yes i understand that um, there are different borders and sometimes if the borders are a bit complicated you can but in terms of doing the math is here doing a piece border you can simply work out what you need okay for just for that block and then you continue for each block so it's easier to work the math out okay if you're struggling with something like that because sometimes quilt math can be a little bit confusing but let me put this laid out properly so you can get a real clear picture of what I'm trying to say. all right guys so this is what I'm referring to so as you can see I've just laid it out it's not stitched together or anything so on each of the corners I'm just going to pull them apart so you can see what I'm referring to so each of the corners here they're not stitched on I need to add a white onto this end here so if I just stitch this together as one one whole piece so that's that corner area on and then I will then sew this together again as another whole piece okay and so on but the objective here is to just stitch on the borders to the blocks and so once you finish sewing you're literally done okay so once I've done that now what I am going to do is to um, layer it onto the quilt top. So I'm going to do as a quilt as it goes, I usually said, in rows. So this will be one row, that will be two rows, and that will be the third row. So I'm going to add the batting to the same size as the panel, I'm going to refer to as a panel, and then I'm going to add the backing slightly bigger probably an inch and a half, two inch bigger. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that, okay? Yes, so that it doesn't shift, but I'm intending on using the backing as part of the binding. So in a sense, I'm telling myself, if I can get this done in one go, then that's easier. So the edge of the backing is gonna fold over to just form the binding, all right? But I'll take you through the process so that you understand but I thought this was a really quick, simple way of getting a, quick to get a quilt together quite easily. The quilt is called squaring up because you can see lots of squares. And I just feel that I'm squaring up to make it so much more simplistic um, to move forward with. All right, so that's what it looks like as the layout. So they're all separated, nothing is stitched together at the moment. But we're going to sew this whole bit together as one this is one that is one and then i'm going to add on the sashing here as normal so add the sashing onto this one and the sashing onto this one so when i do the um quote as you go 
this will be added on. So that's one whole panel, that's this panel, and that's that panel. And then I will sew them together as I normally do with that seam at the back and then use the edge of the backing fabric to fold over to create my binding and it should be over and done with quite quickly, okay? So I'm gonna sew it all together and then I will take it from there. All right guys, so completed now, making all of the rows. So you're looking at the borders here and this is the block, all right? So um, added on the border, so there's a piece border, so it's going to be pieced all the way through. So this is the backing, and I'm just simply going to now baste, as you would normally, and I'm going to then um, quilt, all right? So I'm gonna do the same for all three rows, and then I'm going to do self-binding. So I'm gonna use the backing fabric to bind and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that rather than cutting extra fabric. So what I have done is when I have cut the backing I have given allowance already for the um, to add on the binding. Okay now you don't have to do it this way I'm just trying to make it a little bit more simplified so you don't have to go back and get extra fabric I'm just using the backing fabric to fold over and create that binding as you would normally because by this time the whole quilt is going to be joined together so once I have um, quilted it I will then join the rows together so it's a whole quilt and then I will go around and um, fold over the backing to create the binding as you would normally okay guys All right, guys, before I show you the completed look, just wanted to remind you how to join. So this is the middle row, that's the top row. I have left backing fabric there so that I can fold it over to join or to cover the raw edge for the, um, the binding, all right? I've done the same here where I've trimmed the batting up to the block and I've done that for each of the rows, as you can see there. So that's the top, this is the middle row, this is the bottom of the middle row here and the last row is on the chair, all right? So I'm just gonna put them front sides together and I'm going to stitch it down, iron it open, iron that raw edge open so that the seams lay nice and flat. And then I'm going to fold this over twice and create that fold there again to hide the raw edge, all right? Once I've done that, then I'm gonna go all the way around so that I can um, simply do the binding. And again, I've left um, one inch at the end so I can fold over to create that binding. So basically, as I said, I'm using the backing fabric here yeah, to do the binding. So just completing the whole quilt in literally one whole sweep. But I'll show you the completed look. So let me do that now. Okay guys, so I just wanted to quickly jump in and show you what I'm doing now before I show you the completed quilt. So I am presently just sewing the binding on. And all I'm simply doing is just taking the extra that I left, so the one inch that I left and folding it over to create the binding there. Now I've done a little bit here already and I just wanted to have a little, show you what it looks like. So you can see there's no main difference the only thing here is I'm saving myself a little bit of labor um, in the sense that I don't have to cut for binding, fold it, iron, etc., and then stitch it on. I'm just using the fabric. So in essence, creating a self-binding um, quilt. But I just wanted to jump in and show you, you know, it's coming together very quickly and um, it's an easy peasy one using these shortcuts if you're in a rush to get a quilt done quite fast. All right guys, so the quilt is ready now. This quilt measures 64 by 54. Um, it looks really good. What do you think? It's big blocks and it has come about very quickly. So you can see it's really a simple quilt. 
and um, I did use the borders or use the blocks onto the borders as I wanted to do so it's there so I've used that as my border I've added a cornerstone there as well and um, this is really a simple quilt guys it is done as a three as you go I did also add the, the backing on as to the binding so I folded it over just to make that binding as normal well when I say as normal but you know what I mean but it's a really lovely quilt um, very very lovely lots of white you can obviously change yours if you want but it's an easy peasy beginners block definitely it did come about very quickly especially with the um, adding the borders on and sewing the borders on to the block I do like that idea actually I think it's something I will do um, moving forward not probably for all quilts but for most ones especially smaller ones I'll definitely do that the binding method I used was really good that also helped because I just left a quarter inch sorry a uh, uh, one inch out and then fold it over so there is no sort of tracks behind it when I say tracks you know what I mean but it looks the same nothing really has changed what I do love is my quilting this quilting is beautiful I did beautiful big swirls or curves on this one it just was really really nice it was so quickly I tell you I finished quilted this in two hours if that much but it was really really quick to quilt the rows and quilting this in rows of three separately is so much easier than having to quilt a whole quilt under your throat space it doesn't really show up on the back because of the fabric you can see the join in there I've got to go in really close so you can spot that but other than that guys this is a really simple quick quilt the blocks are there so it's a really big block and again this is my border here so rather than obviously quilting it or making it the conventional way I decided to try a what-if moment as you know but I loved it it was really quick I was so surprised I made this whole quilt in three days I made the whole quilt top in the one day and when I say one day I don't mean a full day either I just simply mean you know throughout the day because I usually will start around eight o'clock and come two o'clock I sort of you know have enough of the sewing room now and then I sort of leave it you know so that was really the time so when I say a day that's really it I don't mean a full day like a normal working hour you know but um, yeah and so once all the rows was done I basted them individually and then I decided was to quilt it I did the quilting on the middle row first and I use a cotton thread gray and I just loved it and my idea for the quilting was just really sort of heart shapes I'll just go in closer so you can see so it was just curve and come back sometimes I did three sometimes I did two so there's three here one two three you know and that's literally it that's what I did and every time I needed two there's another three there so it was bang 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 and when I wanted to mirror that or echo I will go back over and that's what really gave me the pattern but it was whimsical in the sense that I didn't plan it it was just what I felt like but I did want it to do big swirls you know big curves on it I didn't want something tiny I didn't want to really quilted it so densely but it's really lovely big blocks definitely works for a quick quilt but yeah guys let me know what you think about it what I do love as well is you know you get those patches in the middle there on both if you want you can obviously add one in the middle there for yours but I didn't I just kept it as minimal as possible but yeah what do you think let me know love the colors very vibrant very very vibrant <laughs> especially the orange very very vibrant but it works 
Again, this is only six fat quarters and your backing fabric. Yeah, and your background fabric. That's all I use. And in fact, there was leftover from the six fat quarters. So you don't need much to make this. And obviously, if you want to make it bigger, you will then need two fat quarters, um, two fat quarter bundles of six to make it bigger. And then obviously you'll make um, 12 blocks and you'll have a really large quilt actually. <laughs> so yeah, guys, really lovely, really simple, big blocks. You can't go wrong with that, you know? Self-binding at the end, you adding on the blocks to the borders, very simple. And you're doing it as quilt as you go in rows. What else do you need? But I'm loving the quilting. I love the fact that I actually use a gray thread and that has really allowed the, the printing of the quilting to come about really lovely. You can actually see it. So guys, I think this wraps it up. So if you enjoyed this video and you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a message. Definitely give me a thumbs up for this one. This is a quick one, definitely guys. You're in a hurry and you wanna get something done quickly. This is big and beautiful. And you can use scrap for this as well. So definitely a thumbs up for this one. So bye for now. Happy quilting, love you lots. You are just fantastic people. See you in the next one, guys.